Hi, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about option sensitivity, what factors influence the value of the options. We've talked about that a little bit already, things like the risk free rate, the time to expiration, the underlying stock price, the volatility of the underlying stock, all influence the value of an option. But in this video, we're going to get a little more precise and talk about how specifically those changes influence the value of the option price. And oftentimes this is referred to as the Greeks because we classify these according to the Greek alphabet. So we have things like delta, gamma, theta, beta, rho. So all these things are part of the meet the Greeks. Now, if you go back to the Black-Scholes option pricing model, you might remember there was quite a bit of math. Um, I don't tend to do this by hand. I use a spreadsheet to do these calculations, but I wanna walk through what the Greeks are and how we apply them. So one of the first and probably most important Greek measurement is Delta. Delta measures the sensitivity of the option price to small changes in the stock price. For example, if the value of the underlying stock goes up by a dollar, the value of the option is going to go up by less than a dollar. How much less depends on other characteristics of the option. Is the option in the money or not? Um, how much time is remaining till maturity? All those things are going to affect the delta of the option. And I'm going to go through some examples of how to apply these going forward. It's also important to remember that the Greeks are approximations, and that's because most things in options are nonlinear, and so the value of delta, for instance, changes as the stock price changes. So we measure that by gamma. Gamma measures the sensitivity of delta to changes in the stock price. All else equal, as the stock price or as the option becomes deeper in the money, delta is going to increase, so it will have a positive gamma. And that's gonna be important in something we're gonna talk about later called delta neutral hedging. Theta measures the sensitivity of the option price to changes in the time to expiration. Now note, you can see the formula here for calculating theta get that built into my Black-Scholes option pricing spreadsheet. Again, I don't do these calculations by hand. Instead, they're generated in the spreadsheet analysis. Not too many people are going to calculate these by hand. It's much easier to have a software package do that. But theta measures what we call time decay. As the option gets closer to expiration, the theta is going to increase in value. It's going to be more sensitive to each day that goes by. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If you have 75 days till expiration and a day goes by, you still have 74 days. It's not a big change. On the other hand, if you have three days till expiration and a day goes by, now you've lost one third of your time already. So theta is going to increase as we get closer to expiration. The option is going to be more sensitive. It's going to have more time decay. Vega measures the sensitivity of the option price to changes in the underlying volatility. And this is one of the things that sometimes causes early option traders or novice option traders to make mistakes when they're trading around earnings announcements or other volatile events. Prior to the earnings, volatility is higher because there's more uncertainty. Once the earnings are released, the stock is going to become less volatile Notice it's not immediately after, but the day after or so, because that uncertainty of what earnings are going to be is less. So if I buy an option going into earnings expiry or earnings announcement, I'm going to have higher volatility. A day or two later, that volatility is going to drop, and that's going to decrease the value of the option, all else equal. So I have to be aware how sensitive is the option to changes in the volatility of the stock. Volatility is not something that's going to be constant over time. We also have Rho. How sensitive is the value of the option to the risk-free rate? One of the things due to put call parity that influences the value of the option is the risk-free rate. 
And so as that risk-free rate changes, that's going to change the value of the option. Now here is an example I put together. And this was done in early January. So I went and got some data on Boston Beer. Boston Beer was trading at the time for $377. And we're going to look at some June 400 call options. So this was in early January. There was several months until expiration. Those call options were trading for $26 per option. The estimated volatility at the time was 34%. Again, that was the annualized volatility between early January and third Friday in June that investors were factoring into prices. So this is kind of an implied volatility that we factored from the options price. The risk-free rate was about 1.5%. Time to expiration was 164 days. And when we plug this into the model, we got the following Greeks. Delta was 0.4537. Gamma was 0 0.0046. Theta was negative 40.06. Basically meaning each day that goes by, the value of the option is going to drop. Vega was 100.14. And Rho was 65.22. So now let's look at how we can use these. How much profit or loss would you expect to make if Boston Beer immediately jumped to $382? So what that would be is it would be a change in value of the underlying stock of $5. The stock price increased from $377 to $382. The delta is $0.4537. So that tells us that for every dollar the stock price increases, the option should increase by about 45.37 cents. Now we have 20 call option contracts, so that is going to be 2,000 options. And when we go through the calculations, we take that $5 times 0.4537 times 2,000 and that tells us that we should make a profit of $4,537 if Boston Beer immediately jumped to $382. Now note, we are not going to make exactly $4,537 and that's because Delta will change as the Boston Beer price goes up. So this will be more accurate for small changes, will be less accurate for large changes in value. It also is based on immediately jumping because if this price jumps over the next five days or 10 days, we're gonna have time decay going on there. Or if the stock jumps and the volatility increases, now we've got something else going on. So all of these are looking at just one thing and they're non-linear, so these are approximations, not exact values. But it does give you a quick ballpark of how much can you expect to make in an option given that dollar change in the underlying stock price. So the next question, how much profit loss would you expect to make if everything stayed the same for the next 20 days? So one of the challenges with options is the stock price has to move in your favor and it has to do it quickly because the option is going to lose value over time and that's referred to as time decay. Now we are using theta here. One way to keep track of that is we're looking at the change in time and theta starts with a T. So just remember T for time, T for theta and that lines those up. Now, when we look at theta, what we want to look at is what is the change in time in years? So it's not 20, it's 20 over 365 is the change in years. And our theta is negative 40.06. And then again, we have 2000 options from our 20 contracts. So if everything stays the same over that next 20 days, then we are going to lose a 
and give me just a second to do the calculations here. We're going to lose about $4,390.14 due to time decay. What about volatility? We know that if volatility of the underlying stock goes up, that's going to cause the option to increase. But what, in this case, volatility goes down, that's going to cause the option to decrease. So here, our change is from 34% to 31%. That's a drop of negative 0 0.03. We express that as a decimal, not a percentage. Our vega is 100.14. And again, we are factoring that on 20 contracts. So let me do the calculation here. 0 0.03 times 100.14 times 2,000. And that's going to result in a loss of $6,008.40 with that drop in volatility. How much profit loss would you expect if the risk-free rate immediately climbed to 2.3%? Again, it's currently 1.5, climbs to 1.3. So now we're looking at an increase in the risk-free rate of 0.008. We've got to be careful. Remember, this is decimal, not percentage. So 0.008. We multiply that by the row. Again, remember theta was time for T, volatility, V for vega, risk-free rate, R for row. So that's a handy way to keep track of which one you're using there, theta, vega, and row. So we take that 0 0.008 times 65.22 times the 2,000. Do the calculation. And that gives us a profit of $1,043.52. So again, you can see how we can use these Greeks to look at the sensitivity, how the value of our option position is going to change as we change the underlying variables that impact the Black-Scholes option pricing model. Now, if you have a spreadsheet, you can quickly just make these changes in the spreadsheet and get the exact values. But the Greeks are a quick way to kind of look at your sensitivities of your option positions. Thank you.